Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that's uh, and so why is this a generalization? Huh? So why is it a, a generalization? Because if you have uh, an abstract group. Uh, then uh, you can define its uh, uh, pro-algebraic completion. Uh, uh, such that uh, the category of representations of G over K is equivalent to representations of this G hat. Uh, and when I say representations or co-modules today, I, I mean finite dimensional ones. So what is this completion? Well, this O of G hat uh, is just uh, 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 the subalgebra of functions from G to K. Uh, and it is generated by matrix elements of finite dimensional representations. So you take finite dimensional representation V, you have some vectors. Uh, uh, so V in V, you have some F in V dual. And uh, you have a function phi of G equals to uh, F with GV. And then you can prove that it is actually an affine group scheme, uh, and uh, its uh, representations uh, are the same as representations of G. Uh, so, and so t such categories are called Tanakian. Uh, uh, so, uh, and now the question is uh, the following: Can we reconstruct if we have this category? Uh, can we reconstruct it uh, from, uh, from this category? Can we reconstruct the group? Uh, and the answer, uh, well, this uh, algebraic group, the group scheme. And the answer is yes. So, uh, so can. From the category of representations of G uh, as a symmetric tensor category. And uh, the answer is yes, and this is uh, done by so-called Tanakian reconstruction theorem. Tanakian reconstruction. Uh, uh, well, no, G, so G is going to be, uh, so G is an affine group scheme. So if, uh, in this situation, you can, of course, only reconstruct G head and not G. So, uh, uh, so actually, Tanaka did this for compact Lie groups uh, or compact topological groups, uh, and Crane. Yes, that's right. Uh, but uh, this, for, this uh, form of it is uh, rather well goes back to Grothendieck and Saavedra and then Deligne and Milne. Yeah. Huh? Question? Okay. Uh, so, so how does this work? Well, well uh, this is uh, this is very simple. So there is a forgetful functor, uh, uh, from this category to vector spaces, uh, and this is a symmetric monoidal functor. Huh? Forgetful functor, which forgets the structure of representation. Yeah, you well, I, I, so this is cheating, as, as you are, you are correct. That this is cheating because I'm using that it is representations of G. But in fact, uh, it's, uh, it is uh, OK because such functor is unique. So I'm going to say it. In a, uh, so, uh, so, so this is a symmetric monoidal functor, which basically means it's a functor. Yeah, it's up to a non-unique isomorphism. Uh, 
unique. But anyway, this is a symmetric monoidal functor, which I'm not going to give a definition. So, but it may basically means it's a functor that preserves tensor product. And uh, to, for it to preserve tensor product, it actually has to have an important structure, which is called tensor structure, and which is a map from f of x tensor f of y to f of x tensor y. So it, uh, if you just have an additive functor between these categories, it doesn't make sense to say, uh, to ask whether it is monoidal or not. You have to give some structure uh, to make it a monoidal functor. It's an abstraction, not a property. Uh, but uh, so the, there is this forgetful functor which has the obvious such structure. And, and then the group can be reconstructed as uh, the group of tensor automorphisms of this functor. Uh, well, so uh, the group of points over K is literally this group of uh, automorphisms, or rather isomorphism classes of automorphisms. But if you want to, to have the scheme structure, then you have to do this uh, 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 more precisely uh, to equip this uh, G with a structure of a scheme, group scheme. Uh, okay, so this reconstruct G, but, but this is cheating because I use this functor F, uh, 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 so which uh, assumes the fact that this is representations of G, but, uh, but such functor, but, but there is a theory, but there is a fact uh, such f is unique. Uh, so, uh, and because of that, that's actually, uh, the group is uniquely determined. Although, as Romo pointed out, it is unique up to a non-unique isomorphism, which means uh, that this group is actually only defined up to conjugation, which uh, uh, raises all kinds of uh, issues, especially if you work over algebraically non-closed field. But this issue is not going to be important for us. Uh, so this forgetful functor, even though it is forgetful, actually remembers about this group, everything about this group. Uh, so questions? For any Tanakian category. Uh, it may not, no, for, uh, this is called symmetric tensor category. Yeah. So Tanakian category is a special case of symmetric tensor. There are ex uh, symmetric tensor categories for which this functor doesn't exist, and that's actually what the talk is, is about. Uh, so if, ex uh, so, so in, well, if exists, which is the case if a category comes this way. Uh, symmetric monoidal functor. Uh, it, it needs to be, uh, uh, okay, so uh, it needs to be. Uh, uh, no, no, this is a rigid category. So uh, from rigid categories, uh, uh, so, so the functor should be exact and faithful, but, uh, but actually it will be automatic in this situation. No, but maybe I should say exact just to make sure th that it's correct. I think faithful is definitely automatic. Uh, okay, so, uh, so, question? Okay. So, so, uh, so that means that Tanakian category is the same thing as a symmetric tensor category with a fiber functor. So this such a functor is called the fiber functor. And this comes uh, from topology. So if you have a group G, which is fundamental group of some topological space, uh, then uh, the category of representations of G can be thought of as the category of locally constant sheaves of finite dimensional vector spaces over the space. And then uh, if you uh, 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 pick a point, uh, then uh, uh, you can take the fiber of the sheaf at that point, and that would be a f uh, such symmetric monoidal functor, which will identify this category with the category of representations of pi 1 of the space with that point as the base point. 
And so that's why it's called fiber functor. And you see that it is uh, not unique, uh, not completely unique, because it depends on the choice of this point. point. And if you have two different points, then uh, to identify those functors, you have to choose a path between those points, so the identification is not canonical. Uh, OK, so this is what Tanakin categories are. And the question uh, that you might ask, uh, are there other examples? And uh, the answer is, uh, of course, yes. In fact, there is a very simple and very familiar example, which is the category of super vector spaces. So, uh, so for this example, uh, I will take characteristic of symmetric monoidal categories, which are not Tanakin. Oh. Symmetric tensor categories, which are not Tanakin. Of symmetric tensor categories, which are not Tanakin. And so example is, uh, to say, characteristic of k not equal to 2. They also exist in characteristic 2, but let me focus on this case. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then I take uh, the k c to be the category of super vector spaces. So as a monoidal category, it is just uh, 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 vector spaces uh, graded by the group Z mod 2, or if you like, representations of Z mod 2. It doesn't matter if your characteristic is in 2. Uh, but uh, so, so you have V equals to V0 plus V1. Uh, but the only thing that's different is a commutativity constraint. So, uh, S of uh, V tensor W is uh, minus 1 of times the degree of V times degree of W, W tensor V. Uh, and so this category isn't Tanakian for a very simple reason. So there is a uh, notion of uh, dimension uh, of uh, an object. So if you take a unit and uh, you have... Uh, so. Uh, duality means that for every object v, you have a map to v from, uh, from 1 to v to v star, which is called coevaluation. And then uh, you uh, do the permutation. This takes you to v star cross v. Uh, and then you do uh, evaluation into 1. So this gives you uh, a map from 1 to 1. But we know that in the morphisms of 1 is just k. So we just get a number in k. And this number is called the dimension of V. So, so this is a, a number in K. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then uh, in, in Tanakian case, uh, dimension of V is the usual dimension, which is a uh, positive integer. And then we uh, map it. That's right. So any positive integer defines naturally an element of K. And that's what, that is the dimension. But uh, 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 in, uh, in super vector spaces, uh, you have the dimension of V is the dimension of V0 minus dimension of V1. So in particular, if you have a field of characteristic 0 and you take a space which is purely odd, then its dimension will be minus 1, and it cannot be obtained in a Tanakian category. Well, that proof breaks down, but still this category is not uh, Tanakian. So uh, that, that's right. So that's what I'm going to do. So, so, uh, so in fact, uh, what can you do in the, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so this, uh, this category does not have a fiber functor to vector spaces. Because if it did, then it would be Tanakian. And for example, in characteristic 0, this proves that that can't be true. Uh, so, uh, so perhaps, so it actually doesn't admit fiber functors to smaller categories. So, so, so perhaps we should use it as a receptacle for fiber functors instead of vector spaces. And maybe that way we will cover more territory. And that's the general idea. Once you find a category that doesn't map to the known list of categories, you can declare it a new receptacle for fiber functors and see what kind of categories you can get. So, uh, so definition, uh, a super Tanakian category uh, 
is one that admits a symmetric tensor functor. to the category of vector space, uh, super vector spaces. So what, how do they call it? Super vector, let me call it just S, SVEC. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, one can show that again, this functor is necessarily unique up to a non-unique isomorphism. Uh, and uh, what is the analog of Tanakian reconstruction? So you can take, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, F, which is a forgetful functor, uh, which is this functor from C to super uh, vector spaces. And then we can take uh, its tensor automorphisms. But in this case, it will be a scheme already in this category. So it's going to be a super group scheme. Super group scheme. Uh, so, so which is the same thing as a commutative Hopf algebra in the category of super vector spaces. And this is a familiar thing because, for example, when you take a homology of an H space, for example, then uh, this is a Hopf algebra, but of course it is not commutative, but super commutative. So it's a Hopf algebra in the category of super vector spaces. Uh, let's say we take a homology of a compact uh, Lie group. So this is an exterior algebra, but uh, it's not a Hopf, exterior algebra is not a Hopf algebra in the usual sense, but it is a Hopf algebra in the super sense. Uh, uh, so I can call this G. And then uh, we recover uh, this category as representations of this G. But there is one little detail that we also have an, um, uh, an element in this uh, over K, uh, which is an involution. And which is a, uh, so what is automorphism of F? It's a, a linear isomorphism from a vector space f of x to itself for, for every uh, a, a object x, which is compatible with tensor product. And this is just a parity map. So the, the z on x0 is 1, and z on x1 is minus 1. And then a uh, 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 proposition says that, so also uh, due to the linear, I guess, says that uh, uh, C uh, is uh, equivalent to representations GZ, which means what? Representations of G on superspaces such that Z acts by parity. Uh, if you just take all representations of G, you will get a little bit more, but, but really you, uh, it's not that important. But, uh, but the exact relationship is this. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is the el an element of this. Uh, so if we start with a category and functor F, That, that's right. So, uh, yeah, so the, ah, okay, z is in g of k, and z square is 1. And it's central. It acts, so it's supposed to act acts on O of g by parity. So, uh, so, so to set this up, what you need is you need a supergroup scheme 
which means the uh, uh, algebra, commutative Hopf algebra in the category of super vector spaces. And then you need an element z uh, of order two uh, over k, which has the property that conjugation by this element is a parity uh, automorphism of O of g. So O of g is a super space, and it's sup supposed to be the parity automorphism of O of g. So for example, if you look at the Lie algebra of G, which is the Lie, Lie super algebra, then this element is supposed to be central in the e, uh, act uh, trivially on, the, uh, on G0 and by minus one on G1. Uh, no, uh, so it's a scheme, it's a group scheme. And moreover, it's a group scheme in this case. Right, it's a super group scheme, but in particular, it has points, as, as any super group, it has points over k, which is the even, what we call even part. Huh? Points are not, over k are not enough. To get all points, you need to consider it over super commutative uh, nilpotent rings. Then it is enough. Okay, so, uh, and, uh, uh, so this is how super Tanakian categories look like. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the question uh, that, uh, ah, and by the way, I if I am in characteristic two, then there is nothing new. I did not do anything because we don't have uh, minus one in characteristic two. So it's, it's, uh, there is nothing new here. And so the question is, uh, are there others? Uh, and uh, and the answer is no if you impose some conditions. Uh, so namely, uh, so this is what uh, celebrated Deligne theorem says, and it says that it is uh, everything uh, as long as you impose two conditions. One is characteristic zero, and the other is. Uh, so-called uh, moderate growth. So let me explain what this is. Uh, no, because you need uh, the square, S square, to be the identity. So you know, other numbers don't work. It just needs to be minus one. Uh, so uh, definition, uh, so we will say that C, uh, so asymmetric tensor category C has moderate growth. If uh, for any X in C, uh, the length of x to the n, which is the length of the composition series, which are, uh, uh, by our axioms is finite because our category is Artinian, less or equal than some constant Cx times uh, to the power n for some Cx greater or equal to 1. Uh, so uh, you know, in computer science, exponential growth is regarded as fast. But in tensor categories, this is the best you can get. And it can get worse, but not better than this. Uh, and clearly, this is satisfied for representation categories. So it satisfies. Yeah. What? what, what? Uh, so for, for all n, yeah. Uh, so there exists, maybe I should say, there exists a constant Cx yeah. greater or equal to 1, such that this is true for every n. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is satisfied in representation categories of uh, groups or supergroups because uh, you just take Cx to be the dimension, uh, uh, usual dimension of x. So even in the super case, you want to take the usual dimension, which is the sum rather than the difference of dimensions of v0 and v1. Uh, and the uh, theorem of Deligne 
think it was in 2002, uh, says that uh, uh, any symmetric tensor category over k of characteristic 0 uh, of moderate growth uh, is super Tanaki. Uh, so uh, it turns out that uh, both conditions are necessary. You cannot uh, remove them, either of them. Uh, there are counterexamples in positive characteristic of moderate growth, and there are counterexamples in characteristic zero of non-moderate growth. So uh, examples of non-moderate growth in characteristic zero are called the lean categories. And they are interpolations of representation categories of classical groups, such as GLN or SN, to the case when N is not an integer, but let's say a complex number. And this is a very interesting subject. Uh, maybe I'll mention uh, it uh, next uh, time, tomorrow. But uh, today I want to focus on the other uh, case of positive characteristic. So, uh, so if uh, characteristic of K uh, is greater than 0, uh, this uh, fails. And so let me uh, explain examples. Uh, so, uh, uh, and for this purpose, I will uh, uh, um, uh, let me define the notion of a sim semi simplification of, of a tensor category. So, semi simplification. of a symmetric tensor category. So this is actually an interesting subject for many reasons, but in particular, it will provide a counterexample. But before that, any questions about the part up to here? Are there some important consequences of this? Yes, there are. I am going to mention some. Yeah. Well, uh, the lean categories, they have fast growth. And uh, there are actually, actually, there is a question, what kind of growth rates are possible? So uh, if you take the log of this length, this here, it grows linearly. So in the lean categories, it grows as n log n. Uh, uh, but uh, this is for interpolation of Sn and GLN C. But if you interpolate GLN over a finite field, then it grows like n squared. And these are the only rates that I know exist. That I, in fact, I don't know how to construct an example with any different rate, either n log n or n squared. So it's pretty with either a fiber factor? Yeah, he, yes, essentially, yes. He constructs a fiber factor with some huge ring, and, and then he specializes to the field. He uses Nullstein and Zatz, basically, to specialize to the field. Uh, so uh, let me explain what semi-simplification is. It's a very nice procedure, which uh, goes back to Grothendieck's uh, ideas regarding motifs and numerical equivalence of motifs. So uh, the, f the, the definition is the following. So suppose C is a, a symmetric tensor category. And actually, it works in a larger generality. It doesn't have to be abelian. It only needs to be Carubian. And it doesn't have to be symmetric. It works also f under some conditions for non-symmetric categories. So you can use it for non-co-commutative uh, non Hopf algebras. But let me just focus on the symmetric case. Uh, then, uh, uh, let's say yes. Uh, Carubian means that it is uh, uh, I, I'd important. Uh, it is complete under. Uh, taking direct sum, uh, dir uh, so uh, images of idempotence and direct sums, finite direct sums. Uh, and uh, also, if it is Carubian, uh, what we need an, uh, is an axiom which is automatic in the abelian case, which is that the trace of every nilpotent endomorphism is zero. Actually, if your category is not abelian, this doesn't necessarily have to be true. Uh, 
So in an abelian category, trace of a nilpotent endomorphism is always zero because you have a filtration by powers, uh, by kernels of powers of the uh, endomorphisms. But in the abelian category, you don't have uh, kernels. And uh, the, it is in the Caribbean category, you don't have kernels. So this property can actually fail. Maybe I'll give an example later. But uh, uh, w that's what, uh, so let's say Caribbean trace on nilpotent endomorphism equals to 0. Ah, I didn't say what trace is. I should say what trace is. So it's a generalization of dimension. So you start with 1. Then you co-evaluate an x tensor x star. And then uh, if you have an endomorphism uh, A from x to x, you apply it in the first component. Then you switch. And then you evaluate. And the composition is, again, a number, which is called the trace of A. So for example, trace of the identity is the uh, dimension of A dimension of uh, x. Uh, OK, so let's say we have such a category. Uh, then uh, uh, definition, uh, a morphism from x to y is negligible uh, if and only if, uh, well, if, that's a definition, so if uh, for any G which goes the other way, the trace of the composition is zero. And so, uh, of course, it is the same as to say the trace of GF is zero. Uh, and uh, lemma uh, uh, negligible morphisms. Uh, form a tensor ideal. Uh, which I'm going to call N. Uh, so this means that I have a subspace N of X, Y inside a uh, home from X to Y for every two objects, X and Y. And uh, it is stable under uh, uh, composition and tensor product with any morphism. So that's pretty easy to show. It's just a direct verification. And, uh, uh, but if you have a tensor ideal in a tensor category, then you can take a quotient. And so what will we get if we take the quotient? So to understand that, we need another lemma, which is also quite easy. So I'm not going to uh, prove it. It's an exercise. I uh, think it's due to Dave Benson in early 80s. Uh, and it says that uh, uh, let x and y be indecomposable. Uh, then f from x to y. So we will characterize negligible morphisms, but we will actually, it's actually easier to characterize non-negligible morphisms. So this is not negligible if and only if uh, f is an isomorphism and dimension of x is not 0. So either so if f is not an isomorphism, it is negligible. And even if f is an isomorphism, but dimension of x, or equivalent, the dimension of y is 0, it is still negligible. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the corollary of this, if you consider the category C bar, which is C mod n, then this category is uh, uh, semi-simple abelian. Uh, uh, over k and uh, uh, simple object uh, are uh, 
in decomposables in C of non-zero dimension. So, uh, and this is uh, uh, really how it, how it appeared. It was in uh, the Grothendieck study of motives. So, uh, if uh, uh, you study uh, uh, motives, uh, then category of motives is very complicated. But then uh, you have notion of numerical equivalence, which means basically that if you compute numerical characteristics such as zeta functions, uh, then uh, uh, they are the same. And so, uh, uh, if you mod out by numerical equivalence, it's exactly this procedure. And the result, you get a semi-simple tensor category, which in uh, the case of motifs will be representations of some uh, reductive group, which is uh, the motivic Galois group. Ah. <laughs> no? <laughs> Ah, he didn't know? Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, but maybe the, he, maybe the, it was, uh, le uh, maybe less was known uh, about it. M maybe, for example, this property wasn't. You can always, you can always complete Karubia, yeah, complete uh, Karubian completion. But for example, is, was it, is it clear that you have this property there? Yes? Okay. A anyway, so this is a, so maybe I should explain the proof. What do you think? <laughs> uh, let's see. Ah, I, my clock is here. So, uh. okay, let, so let me explain uh, uh, proof of the lemma. Uh, so, uh, suppose, uh, so first of all, if uh, uh, f uh, Yeah, uh, so, so if, uh, so, so suppose first f is an isomorphism. So suppose f is an isomorphism. And uh, uh, dimension of x is not 0. So then take g equal to f inverse. Then trace of f g equals to trace of 1 and equals to the dimension of x, which is not 0. And this means that f is not negligible. OK, this is one direction. Uh, now, suppose uh, uh, dimension of x equals 0. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, well, if I take G composed with F, this is a map from X to X. And uh, algebra of endomorphisms of X is local. So, so this means that this algebra uh, is, uh, right, because X is in decomposed, so it's a K plus, uh, plus M, where M is the maximal ideal. And uh, uh, elements of M are nilpotent. Uh, so this means the trace vanishes on M. Uh, uh, and then uh, trace uh, what remains is compute trace of 1, but then it's dimension of X. And this is zero, so trace also vanishes here. So trace vanishes, and so so f is negligible. And also suppose so suppose f uh, 
is not an isomorphism. Uh, well, in that case, uh, uh, so, uh, so then if I compose G with F, then it is also not an isomorphism. Because otherwise, what we will get is y equals to x plus uh, uh, z. Well, I, I mean, so we have x to y and then to x. And composition is an isomorphism. So this means that y splits in a direct sum of x and something else. And this would be not 0. Uh, uh, because if it were 0, then this would be an isomorphism. So, uh, and this is a contradiction because y is indecomposable. Uh, uh, so, uh, and so that means uh, that uh, uh, it lies in the maximal ideal uh, because the ring is local and because x is indecomposable, it means that the trace is zero. So again, f is negligible. Okay, so this is the proof. So any questions? So I have doubts that Grotendi could not prove this, but <laughs> because it is very easy. So, but I don't know what the story is really. Uh, uh, anyway, but the corollary of this is that uh, this category is a semi-simple abelian, and simple objects are indecomposable of non-zero dimension. And this, is, uh, this follows immediately because what happens because of this lemma by this semi-simplification procedure, we kind of force Schur's lemma. Uh, so uh, if x and y are isomorphic, then, home, uh, then the uh, indecomposable, so uh, then home from x to y, so the nilpotent part gets killed. And uh, what remains is just the scalars, home from x to x, just the scalars. Uh, except the case when dimension of x is zero, then even scalars get killed. And uh, uh, the whole space of morphisms from x to x gets killed. And so if you have two non-isomorphic indecomposables, then all maps between them are killed. Uh, and if you have a map uh, indecomposable and consider its map to itself, then uh, all maps uh, in the maximal ideal are killed. And if the dimension of this object is zero, then also the identity map is killed. So the object becomes zero. And if the dimension is not zero, then you still have the identity. So you have these simple objects, which correspond to objects in decomposables in the original category of non-zero dimension, and they don't talk to each other. So it's a semi-simple category. Yes, definitely. That can. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like in a semi-simple category. For if your category is semi-simple to start with, then of course this procedure will do nothing. But of course, in a semi-simple category, such as super vector spaces, you have objects of dimension zero. Okay. So let me explain how this. Uh, 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 helps us. So, uh, so this is a really nice thing because starting from some bad category, possibly only Caribbean, not abelian, uh, we construct some uh, 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 abelian uh, and also symmetric tensor category. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, let's say we take a finite group uh, over a field of characteristic P whose order is divisible by P. Uh, then uh, if this group has a non-cyclic Silov uh, uh, subgroup and also not Z2 cross Z2, the uh, problem of classifying its indecomposable representation is wild. So there is really huge uh, uh, collection of those which depend on some uh, continuous parameters, so parameters in the ground field. Uh, and uh, is there is, it's impossible to enumerate them in a certain precise sense. Um, uh, so this category will be somehow unmanageable even though it is semi-simple. But uh, of course, you can take an object and see what it generates. And that category could be manageable. That's ac actually a very interesting problem. So, But uh, there are groups, of course, uh, which are uh, 
uh, very simple, like the cyclic group. And for that group, uh, this category is going to be very nice. So let us see what happens. So it's an example. Uh, C is uh, representations over K of Z mod P, where uh, characteristic of K equals P. Well, in this case, uh, what are indecomposable objects? Well, they are just Jordan blocks. So we have a generator here, G, and we have G to the P equals to 1. And then characteristic P, this is equivalent to saying that G minus 1 to the P equals 0. So uh, this means that uh, we are classifying nilpotent operators w on a vector space whose piece power is zero. And uh, such operators uh, are decomposed in a direct sum of nilpotent Jordan blocks of sizes one, two, three, up to p. So indecomposable objects are, uh, uh, let me call it J1, J2, Jp, where Jn is a uh, n by n. Uh, and then uh, what happens when we uh, semi-simplify? Uh, uh, so let's consider the category C bar. Uh, so uh, indecomposable objects should become simple objects, except for this object JP, the projective object, which has dimension 0, because it has dimension P, and P equals 0 in our field. And uh, that object gets killed. So uh, what remains is only up to gp minus 1. So we have objects L1, L2, and Lp minus 1. And then, uh, so, so C is bar is going to be generated. It's going to be semi-simple category with simple objects being these. And then the question is how they tensor. So, well, if we uh, didn't... Uh, uh, if we did this in characteristic zero, uh, we would uh, get uh, just Jordan blocks. And of course, uh, it is well known that Jordan blocks tensor in the same way as SL2 representations, because uh, the element E in SL2 acts by a Jordan block. And so uh, we should get a, a tensoring rule of SL2 representations, the Klebsch Gordon rule, but it should be somehow truncated at P. And uh, it's not surprising that we get so-called Verlinde rule, which comes, uh, which appears in uh, uh, two-dimensional conformal field theory in representation theory of a fine Lie algebras SL2 hat at level uh, k, which in this case will be p minus two. So uh, the rule of tensoring uh, is the following: uh, L m tensored with L n equals to uh, the uh, summation. So the usual, uh, the usual Klebsch-Gordon rule would be that this is the sum over i uh, greater or equal to 1 uh, j uh, l absolute value of m minus n plus 2i minus 1. Uh, and this goes to the minimum of mn. But uh, in uh, this case, we also have to do minimum of p minus m and p minus n. I always make mistakes writing this formula, but hopefully this is correct. Uh, so this is the Verlinde rule. And so let's see. So what happens for p equals to 2? So for p equals to 2, we just have L1, which is always the unit object. Uh, and uh, so we are supposed to get the category of vector spaces. We should check this formula. L1 tensor L1 is L1, because the only uh, possibility here is uh, 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 this, these numbers are all 1, so the only possibility here is i equals 1. So this is a good news. Uh, uh, now let's see what happens when p equals 3. Well, in this case, you can com have only L1 and L2. And this is L1 is always the unit. But if you tensor L2 with itself, well, let's see what happens. So p equals 3. So we have 2, 2, 1, 1. Uh, uh, so the minimum is 1. 
uh, and uh, uh, so there is only one summand, uh, which in this case will be L1. So this is just one. And so this looks like representations of Z mod 2, but uh, except that it turns out to be the super vector spaces. And that's actually a very enjoyable calculation to compute this sign and show that the sign actually appears. So it's kind of unexpected, but, but you do get a sign in characteristic 3. So super vec 3, this is vec 2. Uh, so, the, uh, so this category is denoted by ver p because uh, the, the thing stands there uh, according to Berlin, the rule. So C bar is going to be called ver p and called the Verlinde category. So Verlinde was a physicist, is a physicist who uh, just uh, wrote a paper about this Verlinde rule. And I don't think he was thinking about categories as that, that much. So, but uh, these categories were Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Eric Verlinde. Uh, uh, but, uh, but actually, uh, uh, the, this category was defined by uh, uh, David Kashdan and Sergei Gelfand. But I'm, uh, and also by uh, uh, Georgiev and Mathieu. No, they did it for, uh, and, and they also did it for any simple Lie algebra. But, uh, but uh, I will, that's correct. Uh, so, but I'm going to call it Berlin the category for three reasons. So the uh, one reason that uh, it was called so in Ostrich's paper, which I'm uh, basing this on. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, because uh, Arnold's law says that nothing uh, in mathematics is called after <laughs> the name uh, of its discoverer. In particular, that applies to Arnold's law itself, and of course, to this thing. And the third is because uh, Sergei uh, uh, neglected to uh, attend this talk. Th that's correct, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, this is what happens. So let's see what happens for P equal 5. And let me just take L3. So let's tensor L3 with L3. Well, let's apply this formula. So we get 3, 3, and then we get 2, 2. So this is going to be 2, and we're going to have two terms. So the first term for I equals 1, so this is 0. For I equals 1, we get L1. And for i uh, equal uh, 2, we get L3. So, so if we call L3 equal x, then we get x tensor x equals to 1 plus x. And um, uh, now it is uh, clear why uh, this uh, could never have any fiber functor, either to vector spaces or super vector spaces, because if uh, f is uh, a map from C to super vec, then dimension of f of x would have to be equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2, where this is the ordinary dimension of a vector space. So, so there is no such thing. So this shows that the Lean theorem fails because we have constructed a symmetric tensor category which does not satisfy the Lean theorem. It definitely has moderate growth because even before semi-simplification it did, but it fails to have a fiber functor to uh, uh, the uh, category of vector spaces and super vector spaces. So this is not super Tanakian, starting from P equals 5. I showed it. For, well, you can do the same calculation for P greater than 5. So Verlin the P is not super Tanakin. For P is at least five. And so what is the structure of this category? Well, I told you what it is for two and three. And for higher P, 
it is just a tensor product of uh, its even spin part or integral spin part. So Verlin the P equals to Verlin the P plus tensor product with super vector. Just this is where uh, Verlin the P plus is generated by L1, uh, L3, L5, and so on when p is greater than 2. Questions? Now, so, the, so we have a bad news that the Lenz theorem is false. Uh, and, uh, but I told you the principle that whenever we find a counterexample, we can use this counterexample as a receptacle for fiber functors. Because when we found a counterexample to the uh, statement that every uh, symmetric tensor category is Tanakian, we found a counterexample which was superspaces, and then uh, we resolved that by making superspaces the receptacle for the fiber functors. And similarly here we found this counterexample, so what happens if we replace super vector spaces by a larger category, which is this Verlin de P. So the question is, does any symmetric tensor category of moderate growth over a field K of characteristic P admit a fiber functor Yeah, yeah, so the point. <laughs> extension, exactly. That's a very good point. So, so I should, uh, m maybe since Roma raised this point, this is a very interesting point. So uh, we, we attempt to, uh, so, so try to disprove this. Ah, and by the way, I if this were true, then it would mean, for example, that in characteristics two and three, uh, the Lin theorem is literally true. Uh, so try to disprove it. So Roma suggests the following method. What are, what are dimensions of objects in C? Uh, 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 so if, uh, uh, for example, uh, so dimensions of objects in verb P, so dimension, categorical dimension of L i is just equal to i. So the, uh, the elements in uh, FP. So if uh, dimensions uh, of objects, if you found an object of dimension which is uh, not in FP, but let's say in a quadratic extension of FP, then uh, it would imply that there is no such functor. And in characteristic zero, this is exactly how you can do it because there are these interpolations of the Lean categories, the Lean categories which have uh, interpolations of representation theory of GLN, for example, to complex N. So the dimension of the standard representation will be a complex number. So it will not be an integer. And that's exactly how you can see that there is no such functors from there. Also, they have a growth which is faster than moderate. But in characteristic P, this doesn't work for a very funny reason. So here is a lemma. Let C be an abelian symmetric tensor category. So Symmetric tensor category, in my definition, includes abelian, but I underline this because it's important condition. Uh, 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 actually, uh, uh, maybe not necessarily abelian, l l uh, <laughs> but we need the <laughs> we need something, Caribbean uh, <laughs> symmetric monoidal category. Uh, and the trace of an impotent endomorphism is zero. <laughs> so the same condition as we had over there. Uh, then for every x in C, so it's a, uh, so it's a uh, ri uh, rigid category, uh, for every x in C, dimension of x has to lie in the prime field. And so let me explain the proof. It's a very nice proof. <laughs> 
So the proof is the following. So I take the object x to the p. And now it has cyclic permutation. Uh, and uh, c to the p equals 1, which means that uh, c minus 1 to the p equals 0. So this is a nilpotent endomorphism. So this implies the trace of c minus 1 must be 0. But let us compute this trace. So, uh, well, we only need to compute the trace of c. So you need to compute the trace of C. And the best thing to do is the diagrammatic computation. So let's say we have uh, copies of x here. Let's say p equals 5. So we have x, 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 x. And similarly here. And then uh, C means that we are doing this thing. And trace means that we have to connect things. So we connect here and connect here and connect here and connect here and connect here. And then we get a single loop, which means that the trace of C is just dimension of x. So, so what we get is a dimension of x minus dimension of x to the pth power is 0. And this, of course, means that dimension of x lies in fp. So this is a drastic difference with characteristic 0. In characteristic 0, dimension can be indeed any number in your ground field. But in characteristic p, the dimension can be only in fp. What I'll explain maybe next time is that, in fact, this is only a part of the story. So the, in characteristic p, there is a notion of p-adic dimension, which is a p-adic integer. And this is only the last digit of this p-adic integer. So this uh, method of disproof uh, doesn't work. And in fact, this was Ostrich's conjecture. Uh, that this is always true. That turned out to be false for other reasons. So Ostrick conjectured that, uh, that this is the answer to this question is yes, that any symmetric tensor category of moderate growth uh, over a field of characteristic P admits a fiber functor to where P. That turned out to be false. So I will explain uh, in, the, in an interesting way, actually. But uh, it, uh, Ostrick proved that this is true for uh, fusion categories, which means semi-simple categories with finitely many simple objects. So theorem of Ostrich uh, uh, if C is semi-simple symmetric tensor category with finitely many simple objects then uh, it admits uh, a fiber functor f from c uh, to ver p. Uh, by the way, I, I, I should say that this functor is uh, necessarily unique. So you can prove that even in this setting, if it exists. Uh, and so he proved that it exists for semi-simple categories. The proof is very interesting. Maybe I'll uh, say the ideas behind this proof. But basically, the proof is uh, by constructing so-called Frobenius functor, which uh, is a generalization of classical Frobenius in algebraic geometry and characteristic p. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe I should mention why. Uh, it is uh, uh, very useful to have such a theorem. Uh, well, because we can take, uh, uh, so, so this uh, implies that C can be written as, uh, so we can uh, look at, uh, so we look, can look at uh, G, which is a tensor automorphisms of this functor. And maybe I should write underline tensor automorphisms of this functor, because uh, I should have done that in the super case too. This is the mm, internal ought, which means it's a scheme that lives in the category where P. Uh, 
So it's an affine group scheme. in uh, VRP, which simply means that we have a commutative Hopf algebra in VRP. So in any symmetric tensor category, you can define the notion of a commutative algebra and also a commutative Hopf algebra by drawing the same diagrams as we do in the usual case. And uh, therefore, we can talk about affine group schemes in, in VRP. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, C is going to be basically the representation category of this G. But it should be, uh, well, remember in the super case we had already this element Z. So this is the role of this element will be played by so-called fundamental group of this category. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe I will explain next time more about this fundamental group. It's not a very important point. Uh, but basically uh, there is some uh, canonical affine group scheme in uh, any symmetric tensor category. Uh, which uh, acts canonically on every object. And that's called the fundamental group. In the case of superspaces, it is Z mod 2 generated by that element Z. And uh, the action of this G should be, so we have a homomorphism. This G is not just any affine group scheme, but it also has a homomorphism from pi 1 to G, which is canonical. And uh, representation should be such that restriction to pi 1 is the canonical action. In other words, we can represent our category as representations of something. And this is the first step of classification. Of course, it's only the first step because this leads us to a question, what uh, do affine group schemes look like in this category? And uh, for example, what uh, if you uh, want to consider simple algebraic groups in this category? Uh, what do they look like? And uh, this leads to a question, what are simple Lie algebras in this category? And that all these questions are very interesting and uh, almost nothing is known about this. I'm pretty sure that there are some uh, exceptional Lie algebras in these categories that are not known to men. Because, of course, when you construct, uh, when you go from spaces to superspaces, you al already discover new simple Lie algebras from the cuts list, which were not known to men before this was done. And so I uh, expect uh, and hope that uh, when we go to this even more general setting, we will find some simple Lie algebras uh, uh, that we didn't know before. Uh, so maybe I should, uh, yeah, I mentioned something that I'll say maybe next time also. Well, I don't know about new things, but of course, if you have a Lie algebra in this category, then in particular, if you can take the components related to L1 and LP minus 1, the first and the last, they form a Lie super algebra because L1 and LP minus 1 are exactly the objects that generate super vector spaces. Um, so if I have a Lie algebra in my category, <coughs> then, uh, then I get for free a Lie super algebra. And, um, but how to get Lie algebras in this category of RP? Well, more about this next time. But one way is, recall that this VRP is a semi-simplification of the category of representations of Z mod P. And it also the, is the semi-simplification of another tensor category, which is representations of the uh, nilpotent uh, group scheme alpha P, which is a spec of K of X over X to the P, uh, with X being a primitive element. These schemes are not isomorphic uh, because one of them is a group and the other is infinitesimal group scheme, but uh, their semi-simplifications are isomorphic. And they both give Berlin the P. So if I have a Lie algebra in the usual sense over a field of characteristic P with an action of either an automorphism of order P or derivation of nil potency order P, then in the semi-simplified category, I will get a Lie algebra in ver P and thereby a Lie super algebra. So now if you start with a simple Lie algebra, let's say E8, and you take a uh, mm, uh, nilpotent derivation, nilpotent element, so take inner derivation defined by this element, you will get some Lie super algebras. So it turns out in characteristics three and five, there are many very complicated exceptional Lie super algebras which were discovered by uh, various people, including Gleitas and his collaborators, 
and also uh, Il Duc uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, and it takes uh, a, lot, a lot of space to define them. Now, it turns out that there is a one-line construction of half of those Lie algebras yeah. using this uh, yeah. procedure. So basically, if you take, an e, take E8 and take a nilpotent uh, element of uh, uh, or nilpotency order 5, uh, you can get, uh, for example, exceptional uh, Lie superalgebra of El Duc of super dimension 55, 32. Uh, so it's a very complicated example. And in characteristic 3, there are even more of them. So, uh, so it does produce some really interesting things in a simple way. That's right, yes. So I will explain more of that next time. Uh, so let me uh, try to uh, wrap up. Uh, so uh, uh, and I should say that there is a conjecture of Ostrich. Uh, this holds even when there are infinitely many simple objects. So this remains open currently. Uh, and by the way, I should mention That, that's right. So the conjecture, so this fails for non-semi-simple categories. So this I will explain in a minute. But first I, uh, I want to uh, say that there is a question, do they exist? Semi-simple symmetric tender categories of non-moderate growth in characteristic P. So in characteristic zero, they do exist as those well, the link categories, which I mentioned. But in characteristic P, you can define the link categories, but they are non-semi-simple. And if you semi-simplify them, then uh, indications are that you get a category of moderate growth, which comes from some uh, group scheme in, in verb P. So, so uh, it's actually not known if there are such examples. And some considerations from a classification of finite simple groups suggest that uh, I, I, I believe that the answer is uh, no to this question. Uh, so, so if so, then, uh, then it will not uh, require the condition of moderate growth for this theorem, for this conjecture. But now let me mention uh, finally what happens in the non-semi-simple case. And that here the story is quite interesting. And most of the story will have to be told tomorrow. Uh, but let me give you a very simple counterexample in characteristic two, which my student Venkates found. Uh, so, so we're starting all over again. I'm confused. When you say non-semi-simple. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, yeah. So uh, symmetric tensor category doesn't have to be semi-simple. I talked about semi-simplification. Right. 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 So, uh, so let's take uh, the following example. Uh, so let's take C equals to uh, representations of this uh, uh, nilpotent scheme that I just mentioned. So it's a ring K of D over D squared. And delta of D equals to D tensor 1 plus 1 tensor D. So this is a restricted Lie algebra and therefore uh, uh, it does, of course, have a fiber functor to vector spaces. But I'm going to spoil the, uh, the, the, the uh, braiding, the symmetric braiding. So, so I will uh, say that S is equal to the ordinary permutation composed with the R matrix. And the R matrix is going to be the following, 1 tensor 1 plus D tensor D. So this category consists of vector spaces with a differential which squares to 0. Uh, uh, so this is characteristic 2 characteristic of k equal 2. Otherwise, this doesn't make sense. Uh, th this is a Hopf algebra only in characteristic 2. And so I take the R matrix given by this. Uh, so then uh, mm, I claim that, uh, so, so, so this category has no fiber functor to Verlinde 2, which is vector spaces. 
this category has no fiber functor to Berlin the two. Uh, uh, so this is pretty easy to see. In order to construct such a functor, you have to untwist this R matrix. And when you untwist, you have to use a twist which is one cross one plus one half of D tensor D. And this doesn't exist in characteristic two. Well, there is also a, a more convincing argument why it doesn't have a fiber functor. Yes. Where two is just vec. Uh, uh, so, so another reason it has a funny property. So, uh, so I in uh, uh, semi-simple tensor categories. So, if you have object x sitting inside y, then uh, any symmetric power of x sits inside the corresponding power of y. Well, simply because y is isomorphic to x plus z, and symmetric power of y is the sum of symmetric uh, kth power of x tensored with symmetric i minus k powers of z. But uh, in, uh, in non-semi-simple symmetric tensor category, it turns out that this doesn't have to be true. So this is, uh, this is true not only in semi-simple symmetric tensor category, but also if uh, there is a functor from C to C prime, and C prime is semi-simple. Because this functor is faithful, and if we have an inclusion uh, like this uh, in uh, C prime, then it is also an inclusion in C. So we always have a map from Six to Siy, and uh, the claim is that this map is injective. But I claim that in this category, this property fails. So I claim that symmetric square of x does not have to embed already in the symmetric square of y in uh, rep this d. So let me call this d with the R matrix. And uh, so, uh, so uh, namely, the example is the following, that uh, uh, let's take x. So in this uh, category, there is only one simple module, which is the trivial one. But there is also its projective cover, which, uh, which is the regular representation, which is a non-trivial extension of 1 by 1. And so there is an inclusion i from x to y. And uh, so what I claim is that the map from symmetric square of x to symmetric square of y is actually 0. So I will uh, leave it as an exercise. So this uh, proves that this cannot have a fiber functor to Verlin the two, or actually to any semi-simple uh, tensor category, symmetric tensor category. So uh, maybe I should mention. This one? Yeah. It's an extension. So this is a diagram for the extension oh. of one by one. And so, uh, so maybe, uh, let's see, what are commutative algebras in this category? Uh, well, th these are algebras which satisfy the condition. So if you view them, this does have a fiber functor to ver2, vec2, which is non-symmetric, which is just the forgetful functor from representations of this Hopf algebra. But it, uh, it's not symmetric, so commutative algebra will go to something non-commutative. So what do they go to? They go to the algebras which satisfy the following axiom. Yeah. And uh, if uh, 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 you uh, recall classical topology, so in the 60s, people considered K theory uh, of topological spaces with coefficients in Z mod 2. And uh, K theory with coefficients in the field of characteristic not equal to, uh, originally K theory product is not symmetrical, but you can symmetrize it. 
but except for characteristic two. In characteristic two, you get this type of rule where D is the box time. Uh, so, so actually, uh, K theory of spaces over higher K theory, hi higher, yes, uh, not K zero. So this D uh, ch changes degree. So if you kill the higher degrees, then. But complex K theory, or not Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, algebra. Uh, uh, what? No, not with integer, with uh, when z of one or z of one half. No, or even over z, it is uh, it is not completely symmetric if you consider higher. Over q, it is symmetric, and over field, any field of characteristic p greater than two you can make it symmetric. I don't really know the details of this that much, but I, uh, there are some papers in the 60s uh, written by topologists, so Heinz Miller pointed me to, to those. Uh, and uh, so from this, uh, you can see, for example, uh, so suppose you, uh, you look at this example. So, uh, so if you look at the symmetric algebra of x, this is just polynomials uh, essentially in one variable x. Uh, and if you look at symmetric algebra of y, this is uh, pol uh, polynomials of uh, x and y, uh, uh, where differential of uh, y equal x. Uh, but uh, this is uh, like twisted polynomials, uh, which means with this rule. So this means that uh, if I write x, uh, y times y minus y times y equals to dy times dy, and this is uh, x times x, which is x squared. So we get 0 equals to x squared. And so x squared is 0. So this map is degenerate already in degree 2. It sends the honest x squared, which is not 0, to 0. And so this, uh, this is basically a solution to this exercise. So this is a counterexample in characteristic 2. And um, actually, uh, when, I f when we found it, when my student found it, uh, we realized that it was for a good reason because actually this category is a form over uh, 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 it's a form over a field of characteristic two of super vector spaces. So uh, we, we say that there is no super in characteristic two because there is no minus one, but it turns out that super vector spaces admit a non semi simple reduction to characteristic two. So there is a more precisely you can define uh, uh, a lattice over z2 over squ of square root of 2, over the ramified extension of two adic integers, such that it specializes to this. And so we thought, oh, ver2 doesn't have super vector spaces. Uh, everybody else does for p greater than 2. So probably we should replace ver2 by this, using the same idea. And we were hoping that that would solve the problem. Maybe it's only a problem in characteristic 2. So we hoped that, uh, for about a year that that was the case. And this was a very beautiful story, but then it turned out to be false. Mm -hmm. Ostrich found an example of a category of dimension four, uh, w which had this, but also another object x of dimension square root of two, uh, probenius Peron dimension square root of two, which uh, doesn't map to this category. And then with Benson, we found a whole sequence of categories. So C0, which is VEC in characteristic two, C1, which is this rep D, and then C2, which is this ostrich category, and C3, and C4, and so on. Infinite sequence. And they're all incompressible. They don't map to any smaller category. So the current conjecture in characteristic two is that you have to take the union of all of them. And then this is the ultimate receptacle for fiber functors from uh, categories of moderate growth. <laughs> well. We already, this has already been out for m almost uh, maybe uh, two years. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, actually, uh, right now, what we are doing with Benson is trying to construct uh, this uh, kind of sequence in uh, characteristic p greater than two. So they are also believed to exist, and we are, I think we are close to, to a construction, but it hasn't been done yet. 
so this, uh, I expect that this issue arises in all characteristics and that the ultimate answer will be some union, which I will talk uh, more about tomorrow. Okay, so thank you very much. That's right. Are there any abelian Abelian Lie algebras is just an object. It is. Oh, there's no. Right, all right. But actually, what I will. Okay, Look, commutative group schemes. Uh, uh, that's a more interesting question. Actually, uh, I, that that would be the first thing to try. I mean, we 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 know some things about group scheme, but very few. Uh, I will say next time is also about how this relates to modular representation theory. So if you have a good theory here, you can actually have very imp interesting applications to finite groups. Then I have an observation, which is that in characteristic zero, this relation occurs, for example, in the work of Kunz and Quillen on cyclic homology. This relation? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a foundation of their approach. Well, but this relation isn't... Uh, yeah, but it's uh, uh, no. It's probably. Uh, I mean, uh, this is like exponential. You you can think of this as exponential of d tensor d, and this is uh, like a Poisson bracket. So this is like uh, this Moyal product. So so it is not a coincidence. No, I don't think so. But uh, actually, there is, uh, regarding Lie algebras, there is an issue with what is a Lie algebra. This is something that I will also talk about tomorrow. Because it turns out that if you define Lie algebras using the Lie operand, uh, then they don't uh, satisfy PBW theorem. And uh, so I will explain how to, uh, where counterexamples come from and how to fix it by adding another axiom, uh, which is like higher Jacobi identity of degree P. Yeah. And uh, part of the semi Yes. Yes, yeah, semi simplification is a semi simple category, in particular abelian. Abelian means that you have kernels, co kernels, and uh, images. Uh, the but for example, if I start from uh, the category of from Oh, that category is not rigid, so this uh, uh, procedure is not going to work there. Y y yes. And it also, uh, it's not, uh, um, yeah, so it's, uh, no, I, do, I don't think it works for that. Okay, other questions? Okay. So tomorrow, uh, the same time. Uh. Right, so this follows from what I said, yeah. Right, so, so, so it's always derived from something like that. So, so it actually it doesn't need to have a functor to vector space, it can have a functor to any abelian tensor category. But it's very easy, as you see. This is uh, sometimes happens. Yeah.